Okay, so my name is Dr. Ray. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that are new, I am a small animal general practitioner and on this channel, I share with you um, some insights, tips and tricks that I have learned through my education. I have learned through my 15 years of practice. Practice today, still practice today. And so um, I have good information about what treatments work, what treatments don't work, what the common pitfalls that clients um, come to me, what I see every day real in the clinic, what works, what doesn't work. Um, today we're going to be specifically focusing on prebiotics and probiotics and the GI microbiome. This is an up and coming topic in veterinary medicine. Um, there are lectures now all the time about this. There are new advances all the time about this. And so in this video, we're going to be discussing the very basics of what is the difference between a prebiotic, a probiotic, a symbiotic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so if that is something that interests you, then hang out with us and we are going to get started. All right, so um, if you are new to this channel, we use a lot of times as a reference the textbook Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. It is linked in the description below with some other helpful um, links, tips, and tricks. So we've got um, the website my website is linked there where you can um you know peruse that and see the weekly blog um, and you can see different um, guides and cheat sheets for some of the foods that we review there um, i have linked there the full free um, version of small animal clinical nutrition so that's linked down there i have linked down there amazon storefront that has all the foods that score well the list goes on and on so please check that out in the description box i think that the small animal clinical nutrition has a wonderful wonderful section on prebiotics and probiotics and then today i am going to reference you to a website that purina has that explains prebiotics and probiotics very well now this video is not sponsored i am just using their website because i think it is a very good illustration one of the best illustrations that I have seen on this. Very simple, very concise, and very informative. And so we're gonna hop over to their website and do a little screen capture so that I can show you, um, you know, show you what it's all about. All right, so for those of you um, that aren't familiar with this, there is a, Purina um, has a wonderful learning um, learning tool. I don't know if you have to be a veterinarian to, to do it, but I'm gonna throw it out there. It's the purinainstitute.com. Um, they've got a lot of nutrition science. They talk a lot about their philosophy. They have a lot of their um, data there. And so I know a lot of people hate the big three. They hate Purina. Um, but the reality of the situation is they do do the majority of the research and the research is legit. Um, and so a lot of these um, concepts that they have are gonna have citations where you can go and you can read the paper and you can make a decision for yourself. There's nothing wrong with gleaning more information. And so I know a lot of people are like, I would never, I would never visit the Purina website. I hate that company so much. Well, you know, that's not the best mindset. I think the best mindset is let me read it and let me make the decision for myself once I have the information. If you are limiting yourself and you are not um, addressing all and you're not evaluating all the possibilities and going into that with a reasonably open mind, you are seriously shortchanging yourself. And I see that all the time in the comments where people will not even consider something um, because of some you know, pre preconceived bias. And so we try not to do that on this channel and I encourage you not to do that. Um, we have reviewed few foods across the board. Um, I always get accused, um, I don't know what it is. I have like one specific video where people beat up on me and they're like, oh my gosh, she did review on Hills and she did review on Purina. Well, I also did a review on Jiminy's. I did a review on Lotus. I did a review on Halo. I did a review on Ollie. I did a review on Farmer's Dog. I did a review on Style and Chewy. And so I I, I can't, I can't, I cannot score things not the way they score. It's not my fault if your perfect food did not score well. Um, you know, the scoring system is the same for everybody. And so, yes, some of them came out on top and some of them came out on the bottom. But the, what I'm trying to convey to you is, you know, we found some really good options that maybe even myself wouldn't have considered if we didn't sit there and we didn't actually look at them. And we have said that time and time again, like, wow, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, that this turned out the way that, that it did. And so um, please, um, yes, we are gonna be using the Purina Institute, but let's go into it with um, understanding that it's a very good tool. They've got some really good graphics and we're gonna learn some things today, um, despite maybe your dislike of Purina in general. And so um, what are prebiotics? So we're gonna start with prebiotics because prebiotics go before um, pre, the prefix, they go before probiotics. 
And so there is a, a, a distinct difference between the two. And should you use both? Yes, you probably should. Um, you can check out my video on supplements um, to go over more about that. Today, we're just gonna be discussing what they are. And so prebiotics, as you can see here, are non-digestible dietary carbohydrates. Everybody hates carbohydrates too, um, but they are dietary carbohydrates such as fiber and resistant starches that serve as food for the beneficial bacteria in the gut. And so as you can see here in this graphic, um, we have, you know, our gut is full of bacteria. We need those bacteria to live. We live in a symbiotic relationship with them. Um, but those bacteria don't survive on love and kindness. They have to survive on actual things that they eat, nutrition for that bacteria. They are living organisms and what they eat is the prebiotics. So they eat those fibers, they digest and they ferment those fibers and that is how they grow and that is how they populate. Um, the formal definition is a selectively fermented ingredient that allows specific changes both in composition and activity of the gastrointestinal micro, micro flora. And the aim of using the prebiotics is to enhance the gut microbiota. Um, but it is very important that we follow um, a specific set of rules and a specific set of guidelines when we are using them. So the important thing is not all prebiotics are the same. You can't just pick a human one and feed it to a cat. You can't just feed a cat one and feed it to a dog. Some dog and cat ones are similar, so they can be, you know, they can be interchangeable, but you gotta pay attention to um, the labeling instructions. Um, we need a prebiotic that is resistant to digestion, absorption, and breakdown until it reaches the colon. So it does no good if you pick a really cheap, cheap, cheapity cheap or inappropriate prebiotic and you eat it and it is gastric acids dissolve it and it never makes it to where it needs to go um, on, on, that, on that particular part of the website. Um, okay, so key, key things to note with prebiotics, they're non-digestible carbohydrates and they are fermented fermented by the beneficial bacteria. Um, this, there's many, much study and research on that, and you can read some of the cited down here, um, research papers to go over that. It changes result, it, that the changes resulting from the fermentation, such as the reduction of the pH and the production of the sort chain fatty acids are what promotes the gut health. And um, prebiotics should be used more, you know, generally um, in, you know, the treatment and management of certain diseases. And so that is prebiotics in a nutshell. Now let's talk about probiotics and how they differ. So let's go to probiotics. So probiotics are actual bacteria that you're using to populate the gut, hopefully in a favorable manner. So the gut is home to hundreds of different species of bacteria and other microorganisms, protozoa, viruses, and fungi. Um, and many of these are beneficial, but there are some that are pathogenic as well. And so when you get overgrowth of pathogenic or you get a dysbiosis, that is when your pet is gonna experience some of the common GI symptoms, bloating, um, diarrhea, uh, dietary indiscretion, motility disorders, et cetera etc. Um, the resident microorganisms are called the commensal bacteria and they play a role in your energy regula regulation, mineral absorption, vitamins, the barrier function, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, the important thing to note is probiotics are live microorganisms, okay? That's why it's very important that you pick a, um, the appropriate microorganism and you pick a microorganism um, that is alive and healthy because you need to make sure that it is getting to where it needs to go and it is not dead because these bacteria need to be alive to do the things that they need to do. Um, they are an example of nutritional intervention that can help and by a variety of mechanisms they can help shift the microbiota to a more beneficial bacterial species population. And so you can use probiotics to shift and change the different populations of bacteria in your gut to help suit your pet's needs. And so that's the benefits of of that. So microbacterial colonization of the intestinal tract is influenced by the maternal microbiome. So um, it comes from the mother's side. Um, it is also influenced by environment and nutrition. We talked about prebiotics a minute ago. And then with age and disease and medical treatments, this bacterial um, population can shift and you can use probiotics to help get it back in to check. So in order for a probiotic to be effective, it needs to, again, remain alive and viable um, until it is consumed. So as it's in the package, it needs to stay alive and then it needs to 
survive the gastric digestion process and the um, intestinal enzyme. So it has to have the right vehicle. Um, it needs to be alive in the package and it has to have the right vehicle to get from um, your pet's mouth down to where it needs to go. Um, we need to reduce or prevent adherence of a bad bacteria in the gut. So we need the right bacteria and we need to be promoting the right bacteria because we don't want to overpopulate the wrong bacteria. Um, we need to produce um, products that are unfavorable to those pathogens. So if we put the right bacteria, they can actually smother and overpopulate bad bacteria. We wanna promote a normal balance, obviously, and we want them to be safe. Um, we do not want to cause or um, promote antibiotic resistance or any other type of harmful metabolites, so that's important. And then obviously we wanna be able to enhance the overall health of the pet. So um, probiotics are complete pathogens um, and they also contain some um, nutrients in there as well and they act as a physical barrier preventing the pathogens from attaching to the gut surfaces. And so we don't want bad bacteria to attach to the gut surfaces and so um, a good probiotic is going to facilitate that. Some pro probiotics can actually secrete antimicrobial substances like bacteria. Um, sins and peroxides, and so that's very important. Um, there is some uh, nice research here on the Purina Institute website that talks about the use of probiotics, a specific strain of probiotics that can actually decrease the clinical signs in cats with upper respiratory disease, um, because again, we are excreting some of these um, antibacterial, antiviral type um, substances. And through the fermentation of the prebiotic material, probiotics actually will produce the short chain fatty acids, um, which are you know important you can dive into that again those are in um, I think there's more information about that in small animal clinical nutrition um, we're getting into a little bit of the science there so you may not necessarily need to worry about that in more detail but just know that through the fermentation process um, so as those bacterial ferment the prebiotics that we're also providing um, you get some good byproducts that the pet can use and um, those short chain fatty acids will lower the intestinal pH and that lower pH actually inhibits the bad bacteria from growing because the bad bacteria actually prefer a more alkaline environment. So that's what a good probiotic is going to do. You can, again, look through and um, see some of the very compelling research that they have done down to the exact strain. So like here, SF81, this is a strain of Enterococcus faecium. You'll see on probiotic containers, um, a lot of them will say stuff like um, lactobacillus. Well, it's maybe lactobacillus is appropriate, um, but there is actually down to the exact strain strain. So here we're not just saying Enterococcus faecium, we're saying Enterococcus faecium, um, the specific strain SF68. And so that's why a high quality and actual research probiotic is important and not just um, picking one willy-nilly off the shelf. If you're going to invest the time and the money in a prebiotic and probiotic, it should be one that has been researched um, and perhaps contains that NASC seal that we discussed in the supplement video. Um, so in short, probiotics are live bacteria. When ingested, they have a beneficial effect on the gut. Um, to be more effective, the appropriate strain and the effective dosage must be used and we need to make sure that they are tested for safety and stability. Um, they can help maintain and optimize the gut such that the pathogenic bacteria do not overpopulate. And then they are specifically saying that that Enterococcus faecium SF68 is a probiotic um, that they are currently doing their research on that is um, shown to be really beneficial. And then they list, again, all those research papers that you guys can check out. So that was kind of a crash course on prebiotics and probiotics. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you will pair this with the um, supplement video that we discussed last week. Um, and then again, if you guys um, want more information about this, um, I try to um, do various blogs and things like that um, on my website. So you can check out my website. You can check out my workbook to um, read a little bit more about how to pick a diet and very little bit about supplements in there. Not a lot, but I am happy to do a supplement guide. If you check out the website, I have various um, kind of like quick starter guides on puppies, um, pet grief, uh, pet weight loss, and I can certainly um, you know do a concise handout on supplements, which would include prebiotics and probiotics as well. Um, so I hope that you check that out and I hope you will hang out again with me next week and um, leave comments about what topics you'd like to discuss.